today and we're going to learn about abstract art. Abstract art is really fun. It is when an artist takes lines and shapes and puts a work of art together that our brain can't really think of in identifying. It's not a work of art that looks like an animal or a person or a still life or a tree. It is just a bunch of shapes, lines, and colors kind of put together in a design that's pleasing to the artist and sometimes the viewer. We're gonna look at a bunch of different artists and artworks and we're gonna create our very own abstract art today. There are so many abstract art artists out there and I'm gonna introduce you to a few today. Some of our older students will look down below at Victor Vassarelli and he was what was considered op art. So even though if you look at these cubes, he would take like mathematical shapes that you learn about cubes and spheres and cones. And even though the paper is flat, when you go to see his artwork, it looks as if it is 3D by the way that he drew it. And it kind of plays tricks on your eyes. Jackson Pollock was an amazing abstract artist artist but he went one step further and he was kind of what we call the father of action painting so you would actually envision him creating this work of art he would put it on the floor and splatter paint everywhere and get really physically involved in his artwork Vasily Kandinsky was an abstract artist that used shapes and lines and he connected music with his art Vas Vasily Kandinsky was fascinated with music and art and almost being an inventor for the abstract movement. He really took lines, shapes, and the connections of what music made him feel into an amazing amount of abstract paintings that he left us today to study. Today in art, we're going to use shapes and lines to make two op art circles. Op art is optical art. That means the way that your eyes or your optics see things. So even though our paper is flat, we can create some volume in shapes. We can play tricks on our eyes. And we are going to use this checkered pattern and this cone pattern to create these op art designs. The inventor of op art was Victor Vassarelli. And he has some really fun, interesting designs using pattern, line, and shape. Today we're gonna work on op art. Op art is art that has an optical illusion. So you can tell on this sphere or circle that there is a kind of round shape by the way that the checkered pattern is to create kind of this optical illusion of it having space. Over here, we have some basic manipulation of lines that make it look like they're kind of going in on each other. So there's a lot of different ways to create op art, and it can take some time, but it can also be really fun. So we're gonna work on these two types of circles. Your goal is to create two circles in op art. You can come up with a different design um, if you research different optical illusion styles. But what materials you'll need is you'll need two pieces of white paper, one for each circle, scissors to cut them out, glue to glue them down, a ruler, markers, and pencil, and some construction paper um, in a fun color. I did my example in black. You can do it in whatever colors you have laying around to glue your circles down. So go ahead, pause the movie, get your materials, and let's get started. So I forgot to mention, you also need a circle to trace. Um, you want it to be a big circle, um, not huge, but maybe if I used my ruler, anywhere from about five to six inches wide. I, if it's too small, that's gonna um, not allow you a lot of space to create your optical illusion. So you don't wanna get under three inches. If you look at my example, my circles were about five and a half inches um, wide. So I just went in my pantry, and Miss Santa likes to drink lots of coffee, so I had a coffee lid. Um, you know, so find a lid to something and 
you can trace it. All right, starting with piece of paper number one, I'm gonna put that circle down, holding it with my hand, taking a pencil, and easy peasy, just going around the circle. Doesn't have to be perfect. And we're gonna start off with our checkered one. This one's my favorite. And if you look carefully, there is a straight line with the ruler that goes across and another straight line that goes across, almost like a T. And this is right in the middle of the circle. So if it's best for you, you can cut it out. Let's do that so we can find the middle point of the circle. Because if you don't know and you make a line up here, um, it's, it's gonna turn out silly. So after you trace that circle, grab those scissors and cut it out. Now the best way to find my circle it center is to fold my circle in half and then fold it in half again. So I was looking at this fold to make sure that it looks like a T. So there's the center point of my circle, okay? So I'm going to take my pencil and trace over that center point. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a curved line and it's gonna go from this point to this point. And I'm gonna go all the way up and all the way down. Always going all the way to the point, all the way up, and all the way down. And you want them to be equally spaced about finger, um, a fin good finger space apart. So that, that takes a little practice because you really have to focus visually on the space being equal. I'm gonna flip it over and repeat on the other side. Starting at the dot. So now I have my horizontal curves. It kind of reminds me of like a basketball or a pumpkin. Now we're gonna go the opposite way to get the checkered. So looking at this horizontal line, my lines are vertical. I'm going to make my horizontal curves. So check it out, does yours look like mine? You have a horizontal line, your lines are going up and down. You're gonna start at that horizontal line, make a point. You're gonna arch and go to the other point, keeping it equally distant, just like you did in the last time. So I have about three lines each time that I'm making. Yours may be different. Switch it over and I repeat. All right, that already looks pretty cool. So when you go to color it, I did mine in a black and white. You can do your checkered pattern in um, any color combination you want to do. really want to, and you can use markers, crayons, color pencils, you really want to focus on that checkerboard so it's a pattern. Every other square gets color. I'm going to do purple this time. So I'm going to start over here and this one gets color. This one gets skipped. This one gets colored. Okay, so this one gets skipped, and this one gets colored. I like the marker because 
Um, having a nice big Crayola marker um, colors the area quickly. So this is just something you have to make sure that it has a checkered pattern and you're paying attention so that the ones above it, so there's purple. I know this one's going to not be colored because it's the opposite. And then this one will be colored. I've done this a lot of times. Sometimes I make mistakes and you guys have already worked so hard making this design. Just do your best. If you accidentally color in the wrong square, just move on and keep going. If you're a big perfectionist and you don't mind the extra time, you can go through and in pencil make a little mark where they are so you know um, which ones to color. But for me, I'm just gonna go for it and I'm not gonna worry about it and relax and enjoy this pattern. So again, here's the white, here's the white. So this one has to be the purple. This one has to be the white. And this one will be the purple. It's an opposite pattern. If you think you have the pattern, you can continue to follow along with me or take a break and finish this um, while relaxing away from the screen. It's up to you. So when we get to the end, it gets a little weird. So that's white. And then this shape is the purple. White. I switch to the other side. Thinking right here is white, so that's gonna be purple. White, purple. I think you got it. So now I just keep going. So that already looks pretty cool. So we're gonna set this aside and we're gonna start on, you guys did a great job on that. We're gonna start on our next one. This one's a little different. So get, again, your white piece of paper and your circle to trace. And you're gonna cut it out because I think cutting it out always helps you find the center point. And we're gonna repeat the same thing, folding it in half. Open it up, fold it in half again. Using your ruler, you're gonna trace over that straight line so it looks like a T. 
Now we have our T, all we're gonna do is make an X. So going in between my center point and these I want to be equal. Kind of like a pizza. So we're essentially taking a whole circle. We divided it into four pieces. Now we divide it into six pieces one more time to make eight. A little bit of fractions and math. Now for this optical illusion, your pattern is going to be one side with curved arches like a rainbow or a um, down facing sad face and the opposite, your happy face or a U shape. So you really want to exaggerate and get these big kind of rainbow curves. When you get to the edge, it goes off and then kind of comes down. So I have that nice rainbow curve. Over here is gonna be the opposite, it's gonna be a U. Over here is going, well, let's go back over here. So you got your rainbow sad face, your happy face you, and now I go back to rainbow. Back to you. Back to rainbow. Back to you. Back to rainbow. one back to you. So what really makes this have that op art and pop out is having um, some value in it. So this is kind of a smaller design. You can use your regular markers or if you have skinny markers it might be a little bit better. My last one, I, in the example, I did as a rainbow. This one I'm gonna come up, um, you could do one color. This time I'm gonna come up with two different colors. And I'm gonna do purple and yellow because that kinda is my theme going on right now. Actually, I'm gonna do purple and orange. This yellow is a little bit light. So, I'm gonna, Trace these. And I like to sometimes, if, if it works for you, you can go orange, purple, orange, purple, but I already know. So I'm just gonna stick and do all my orange and then go back and do all my purple. Okay, now I can switch to purple. Okay, so now that we have everything outlined, and I know that that seemed like 
it might have taken a while to create these. Hopper and patterns do sometimes take time, but hopefully you're enjoying the process and after looking at some of the other artists that have created op art, can really develop an appreciation for their art. So I'm going, if you have colored pencils, those work great. I am gonna use crayons because that's what I happen to have laying around right now. And I'm gonna use a purple and orange crayon. And if it's a color pencil or a crayon, what I would like to see to really get these to pop out, and I didn't do a very good job in mine. In mine, I just colored with the crayon. And it makes it look a little bit flat. It still looks pretty cool. But I'm gonna show you on this one, by using value, which we've talked about as an element of art, light and dark. So for example, I'm pressing light with my crayon and I'm just gonna kind of color horizontal here, light with my orange crayon. Now on the edge, following in that direction of the arch, I got some dark orange there by pressing harder. And I'm gonna blend it just a little bit more and a little bit more. If you have crayons, what's great about crayons is sometimes they come with a variety of colors. So you could go one step further and get even a darker orange. And so I've got this value where it's dark and then really light. And that's what we wanna try for. So again, I'm getting a light layer of coloring on my orange by pressing light, not pressing hard. And then on the edge, I press a little bit harder to get the darker color. And also on the rise, add black equals dark, add white equals light when you're painting, but not with crayons. It just turns out a big mess. I tried that once, it didn't end well. Well, what we're doing, at my ladies came in, what we're doing is we are creating value, which is light and dark. <laughs> light and dark of a color, okay? So we're gonna do it for the last two, same thing. Okay. Press light. And press dark. And then press dark in the corners. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I said, right? <laughs> do you girls wanna help me color? All right, Samsel girls are not participating today. Okay. So you always wanna kinda of keep that a little bit of a smooth transition. One more. Light, so whenever you do value, always go light to dark. You can get darker, but you can't get lighter. Can't erase the crayon, erase the paint. The difference between this one and this one by using thinner markers and using the crayon with the value it really pops it up and creates this kind of cone shape so we're going to do the same thing with the purple pressing light with the pressure and then pressing hard in the corners following the direction. Yes, Noelle, would you like to practice one? Sure. All right, so let's see if first grade Noelle can help with this value coloring in op art. So did you see how I did it? Pressed hard, 
on the sides and light in the middle. Okay, I'll hold it down for you. So press light. Okay, so Noelle, now you can start getting that darker stuff. Even Noelle, she changed the direction a little bit. Getting that directional coloring is a hard skill to learn. So that's why we're doing this in fourth grade, huh? Mm hmm okay. So for Noelle, what we wanna see is a little bit more of popping out that darkness. Can I try one, Mommy? Mm-hmm. And that's hard to do at six. But you did a great job coloring. And it still has value. So let's see if fourth grade Annabelle can do one. So you want to do your light first, Annabelle, and then the dark. Okay, so think about how the arch is going this way. You want your crayon to follow Noel. <laughs> you want your crayon to follow the direction. So this time, this is what's great, is because we can see live students working. So with Noelle, she had a lot of directional change. What I, and Annabelle was coloring up and down, which we want to, it's easy that way. What I wanna see with this one is really coloring side to side lightly and then coloring side to side in that dark area, okay? So let's see if she can figure it out. So pressing the light, very good. And then getting that dark value. Okay, and remember, look at her lines. Her lines are going down. They wanna go up. Of course. But see, look, you can fix it. There's no reason to get frustrated or start over. So she's got a light to dark. There, we want to get a little bit smoother of a transition. So I'm going to have her do it. See how it goes up like an arch of a rainbow? I want your crayon to go up in that and get that darker value on the corner and then kind of bring it lighter. Good, and then blend it in a little bit. Not all the way, because this is gonna be your lightest, just here on the edge, so it's not dark versus light. So just right here. See, it's a little bit lighter, a little bit lighter, a little bit lighter. Good. So today we have our two op art circles. You can tell the difference with the value. This op art's making us silly. All right, let's get out the glue glue stick. Put some glue on there. What? Now, you're going to have to plan ahead because with my construction paper and the size of my circles, in my first example, no problem they didn't overlap. And this one, they're going to overlap a little bit. Honestly, I am going to have this one on top because I think it looks cool. And that means we're going to glue that one down first. Alright, so put that glue stick on there. This is not a glue bottle, so you do not do just a dot, not a lot. What and make sure you get it along the edge. What you're going to do mm -hmm. is you are going to do a circle and then color in the circle on the inside. Oh, and if you like. Okay, do your next back. one. Sorry. Noel, you can stick it on. Yeah, help her out. Get the edge. Always on the edge so the edges don't curl up. Excellent. Yeah, like Noelle, you can do that. All okay. right, let's stick it on They're and fourth see. They're fourth graders, so I expect less messier. Mm -hmm. I know what I mean. 
And there is our op art. I'm actually gonna move this one a little bit further, Annabelle. Can you move that one for me? So it's closer to the corner. Perfect. That's a pretty cool design. And it I'm excited have to see where you put that. That's right. I'm excited to see what you create. It looks better everywhere. Thanks for helping, girls. Bye. So now we've got a, our two ops, our, our, <laughs> so now, <laughs> now we have our two ops. So today class, blah, 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 I don't say blah, blah, blah. Oh, All right. Blah.